Well, hello there. This is the Kermit and Muppet Show. No, it's not. It's me doing the usual stuff. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to my live. And uh, welcome, Amanda. Welcome to the people that's just joined in. Yes, it's that time of day again when someone forces me to do a love a live chat. Uh, just when I thought I got away with it today. Um, so, uh, hello to everyone. And... Um, for those of you who don't know, I normally waffle on unless you ask me a question. So um, I'm just going to pick a subject at random and um, talk about it. I'm just thinking what subject can we talk about? Uh, the moon. I'll talk about some of the things. On, well, I'll talk about Mars, actually, because um, Mars, I think, is a little bit more interesting in its history than the moon. Um, although the moon's got its, its, its fair share of stuff, but Mars uh, and NASA really is is where I'd like to probably go with. Um, so, you probably, if you've not seen my videos already, I sort of mentioned that Mars is uh, there's a Earth equivalent to Mars somewhere, and I can never remember the name of it. But everyone helped me out, which was great on the videos, and it suggested that although M NASA uses this particular area to do um sort of fake tests it's suggested that they actually the fake tests that they do or simulations shall we say are actually also pictures from there when they pretend that they're actually from mars now that um there's a person that's done a really good uh, series of videos on that and that was richard d hall if you haven't seen it richplanet.net um and they've gone into some details on these objects that they uh, photographed um on the on the mars surface now these uh, objects look like a rodent i don't know if you guys have seen that um there's a what looks like a what they call a sleeper which is um a big plank of wood that was normally used for train tracks type thing uh that that was showed up there and various other objects now they in the rich planet videos they actually try and go back to whether or not these type of things, there was bones there as well, uh, whether these type of things would actually be on that island that um, NASA uses or whether or not it's just uh, a coincidence. And it turns out these objects, including the rodent, type, so there's a certain type of rodent on that island. So it kind of looks like NASA fakes some, if not all, of the pictures. And I don't know if you guys remember the pictures when they first came to us from uh the mar from mars when they very first came it was a nice blue sky and then um a, a couple of hours later they changed the pictures and the newspaper the next day showed them with a red tinge instead of the clear blue sky so basically um you gotta ask yourself then okay so if they were fake pictures back then when they first landed on mars and took these uh, rover pictures were they fully aware that mars actually had some um atmosphere enough to make it a blue sky in which case when they did the fake pictures from earth on that island they were quite happy to leave the sky blue um or did they just do the pictures and think it's and think it's going to be blue on Mars, but then everyone turns around and says, "No, it's not." That's that's why they changed it because there was a big uproar. Um, so th there's uh, sorry. So someone's asked some questions. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to read it. I'm sitting in a car at the moment. Um, health, this wealth has wrote proof. Um, kind of have to be slightly more specific because obviously um what part do you want the proof on um nasa does have an island that's that's you know that's a fact um uh, i'm sure someone on here amanda will probably be able to tell you the name of the place so there is actual place that nasa uses which is genuine and the pictures that are from nasa that show the rodents and the other things and the bones and um they're genuine pictures from nasa but are they from mars so if you if you want sort of me to define something ask so same proof because i've waffled on a lot now so if you sort of 
pinpoint what you want me to prove. But yeah, there is definitely an island that NASA uses. Um, Amanda's wrote, why do they lie about the pictures? It's a really good question. Um, because they... So, this is the way I see it. Um, we've been to Mars for a long time. Um, at least at least from the late 50s. Um, we was in, on the moon uh, in the late 40s. Um, and we've been on, on Mars from what I gather from the late... Uh, maybe early 50s, late 50s. Um, and obviously they don't want us to know what's on Mars because what's on Mars and what was on Mars will change our history and it will confirm a lot of the stuff that is in my videos and a lot of the stuff that people say that's out there, you know, that there is aliens and so on and so on. Um, so the problem with um, NASA showing the pictures um, is... That, I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen the Disclosure Project. It was done back in 2001, something like that. Um, Stephen Greer set it all up. And they had people there uh, working for JPL uh, Propulsion and things like that. There was um, testifying that NASA were airbrushing out um, UFOs on on Mars pictures but these were orbital pictures looking down and they were brushing them out so clearly Mars you know has got UFOs on it and of course if if they went there and actually had a genuine rover there and took pictures they'd have to airbrush a lot of stuff out because there's a you know the I personally think from what people have said whistleblowers that the atmosphere would produce a blue sky as opposed to a red tinge um which is why probably NASA allowed the very first picture of the blue sky, but everyone here on Earth back then uh, was going, hang on, shouldn't it be red if, if the planet's red? Um, you know, so, and because there was no grass there, how can it be a blue sky? So I think there is um, reasons for them to hide that. Um, now, if the other side of it is if there's indigenous life on Mars that went underground, um, now there are orbital pictures from nasa that show a lot of them actually show um what looks like these tube tunnels um corrugated underneath the martian surface that have been exposed over a long period of time in other words sandstorms and whatever else or dust storms should i say um and they've created this um uh, under, underground tunnel network that you can visit visibly see on some of the photographs. Obviously, NASA didn't probably didn't catch all of them, and they do airbrush them. But if that's the case, if that is genuinely the tunnels, and then you go along with the um, whistleblowers that say that you know they've been to Mars and underneath is tunnels and there's indigenous race, but they don't talk to them. Um, they, they, they don't want nothing to do with them, or the indigenous race don't want nothing to do with us humans and there's not just us humans on there's obviously little greys as well and whoever else um so if nasa doesn't airbrush these things out then we'll eventually find out that that's all real in which case then the government would have to admit that aliens are abducting people and then all hell will break loose because people will go oh we're not safe and then obviously goes back to the religious thing which um the religious people will obviously be up in arms about that um they seem to be up in arms about my my videos at the moment um so yeah um okay so uh quasington has wrote tell me about harp so harp is uh another one of those black military projects that started off as a black military project um unfortunately over time um they've kind of diversed into various different side of uh, other things that are now mainstream things and they um had to sort of go on the book so to speak and then um be let basically the public was aware of them then um so it's like area 51 there was no such thing as area 51 but eventually they had to admit there was an area 51 but then they say oh well it was just for classified um uh aircraft not spaceships so same thing with harp it started off as a classified project but they ended up diversing and having to deal with um other companies that obviously you know outside of the military they had to deal with them um and eventually it got to a point where it was no longer a secret so they ended up doing that but they also did uh, do other things so harp isn't 
the world's nicest place to work for. Um, I've seen videos of people like Jesse Ventura going up to the gates of Harp and trying to get in. Um, and it's basically, I think, if I remember correctly, there was a sign that said basically, you try and enter here, you'll be shot. So it's a, it's a real secret thing. Um, and what they do is various things. They deal with um, weather manipulation. I'm just being as basic as I can here. Um, they also deal with underwater. So there's, uh, over the last 20 years, there's been a series of these um, animals, fish, uh, dolphins, all sorts of things, um, heading towards um, land and actually beaching themselves. And that's because these submarines that um, the military have were testing these devices that Harp were uh, using. Sonar, um, it wasn't actually called sonar, it was something else, but it's similar to a sonar um, sound frequency that would then make these animals literally, you know, go as far away as possible. Um, now I'm not sure why they were testing it, but anyway, the poor animals obviously end up beaching themselves and dying. So harp isn't the you know a friendly thing. It's it's a military um, position for them, and they've not just got one in the in the states. They've actually got them dotted around the world. Obviously, no one's they're not all going to turn out with a big sign saying this is harp. Um, but these buildings um, are doing various things and some of them, um, are related to the chemtrails as well. So it's, yeah, like I say, it's not a nice place. Um, so harp is the ones that's probably causing us the acid rain that we have with the chemtrails and the, the, they can actually manipulate weather. I mean, they, you know, we had some freak storms this year, um, and that you know it was all over the world even brazil had snow and stuff it was a, a mass um <laughs> a freak show around the planet um but of course mainstream won't show that because mainstream's you know part of the uh, agenda um but when you add it all together you know all these different places having all this freak weather conditions and then you think okay where are we now in terms of where the government w or, or not government where the elites want us um they were testing those those facilities out on us um and it was working you know it was getting flooded in all sorts of places so i think these uh harp was with these tests i think harp is preparing it's a chess game at the moment unfortunately and i think that they're they're putting their pieces ready for the end game which i don't know whether it's going to be um next year or the year after but they're certainly coming to a point uh, you don't offer a million pounds to get um something that uh in, in the movies of pandemics you you know you, they're breaking into these chemist shops to try and get the the vaccine and now in i think australia or somewhere they're offering uh a million pounds um you know so that's my take on harp they're part of the end game um the value actually they do both a lot of the time to integrate more confusion so that's going back to um uh the mars pictures i was talking about a minute ago um yeah i mean i can't be 100 percent sure that they haven't got a rover on there um but we you know i know from my point of view that nasa is a front for the space program but obviously the space force has already been out there a long time and that's what it's called the space force even though um they've only just come up with that name with with trump or whatever but no the space force has been going for some time as gary mckinnon proved uh many many years back now um and if you don't know who gary mckinnon was he was the guy that hacked into nasa's um computers etc and the militaries and found out about the space fleet that's up there already and the personnel etc and the names of the ships and various things and since then whistleblowers have agreed that he, he was right so um now whether or not nasa has actually genuinely put a, a rover on miles i couldn't tell you to be honest but i do think they um do fake some of the pictures yeah for sure um the counter revolutions wrote bloodlines um if you could try and be pacific on bloodlines because we've got all sorts of bloodlines we've got the anarchy's bloodlines and we've got the what you call the um the family of 13 or 14 i now say with, with mr gates in there uh that, that run the planet then you've got the 
blood bloodlines of um, the uh, Knights Templars and things like that. So if you just if there's something specific you want to know, if you ask me, otherwise I can waffle on and it might not be what you want to hear. Um, Tommy Wrights wrote, "We're not alone in our solar system. Come universe, we made contact with ancient Anunnaki Stargate time." I'm just trying to read on from his next thing. Uh, not on this Earth technology, ancient Stargate, ancient technology, ancient Anunnaki gods. Yes. Yeah, so if you, Tommy, if you've watched any of my videos, exactly what I pretty much say. Um, however, Man to Wills has done four laughing faces at me and then says, OK, Ron Hubbard. So any of you that don't know who Ron L. Hubbard is, um, he was one of the people that suggested that aliens were here, blah, blah, blah. And I think he's the one that created Scientology. Um, you know, the sad fact of the matter is some, not all, some of what he said matches where, where you know matches what i think is is the, the, you know tr our true history unfortunately as with most people once a bit of power goes to their head and that goes with religion as well you know like david koresh for example from the waco uh once people have that power and they think people are listening to him and following them obviously my people uh that are listening to me now who's putting all these little f hands up of i can see them all um these people here that's listening to me have obviously got their own brain and can make up their own minds. But unfortunately, there's people out there that do get sucked into things. And I think Ron um, ended up abusing his power and then obviously making up a little bit more because he probably didn't have all the answers. So he probably done some research to start off with, um, but then he added and embellished stuff just to make it seem like he knew more than he does. Um, and of course, then you get followers and then he created this... Um, religion really um so yes no i'm not ron hubbard <laughs> and uh, i don't think i'm like him i think i'm just someone that's throwing out my thoughts on everything um uh, tommy wright uh, uh no no i've read that bit sorry uh sports clippers wrote what do you know about admiral bird probably the same as most people um <clears throat> he was an admiral um he was he went to both both north and south pole he did an interview, which is actually on, I think you can see it on YouTube, where he's talking about Antarctica um, having green grass and things like that, um, which obviously it's difficult for us to know here, but he obviously seemed to, to think there was. And then he went back there um, because, um, long story, but he took a, a fleet with him, a massive fleet of American ships, because he'd found out that there was um, an opening into Antarctica where he was, last time he was there, he was dragged in by a UFO. Uh, not dragged in by a UFO, he was dragged in in his biplane or in his plane um, by some sort of tractor beam, apparently. And then um, was warned, don't come back here. Of course, American people, military said, go back there <laughs> uh, and take take a fleet with you. So he did. And there's actually footage of that fleet um, embarking and going to Antarctica. There's footage of it. But of course, the um, premise of that isn't, oh, we're going to explore a, you know underground part in Antarctica and we're going to attack UFOs. It's um, they, they obviously classed it as a research mission with tanks and <laughs> yeah um unfortunately he um they lost a lot of men from what i understand uh, in this fight and he came back with his tail between his legs um and went back to the military and then wrote a diary on it which is how we have come to found this out now some people say the diary's fake but the point is he went there he went there with military so so you got to kind of say What's in the diary does seem logical. Uh, you know, you wouldn't go and do research with tanks on in the middle of nowhere unless you think you're going to fight someone. Um, you just wouldn't do that. So, um, and then later on, um, the Battle of LA, if anyone knows what the Battle of LA is, I, I believe from what I, I've heard that the craft that came over LA where it was being shot at, uh, was one of their craft, What was one of the Antarctica's craft. Now, these are Nazis in there, in Antarctica. I know as soon as I say that, a lot of people think that I'm being crazy. Um, but, yeah, um, 
they've got the long story oh, but they've got the they had the technology thanks to aliens helping them um and that was one of their craft and they were, they flew over uh, los angeles and then flew back and then they did it ever so slowly and they did that to prove once again that um the military couldn't shoot those craft down um and then in the end the military decided to team up with uh the nazis and supply personnel which is what nazi the, the nazis were short of but they had the technology so in return uh the nazis would help them with the technology and then by then though the nazis had already gone to the moon and then when the americans ended up giving their personnel to them that's when the americans ended up going on the moon as well so um, that's Admiral Bird in short. If you want to know a little bit more, ask the Pacific question. Okay, I'm just going to scroll on here. Uh, the values wrote, it's like trading weapons, regular information and providing uh, to both concepts on each side. I'm guessing that's referring to Mars again. Uh, whole, whole tis the dog. Uh, Satanists and immu Illuminati, is that? Sorry. Satanist and Illuminati relationship. Um, I I have actually tried to stay out of the Satanist side of it. Um, yes, we know that they, you know, people's probably seen the videos and pictures of them worshipping. And I mean, even to this day, um, you know, they go around and dress up in bloody weird sort of clothes, red clothes and stuff like that, red capes. Um, so there is... There is a, a, a Satan element to it. Um, now, there's the, the trains of thought on that is, one, is it because it was a serpent, e.g. a lizard race that's in charge of them? There is another thing that I was just uh, recapped on the other day, actually, uh, on listening to something. Um, and it was David Wilcox was saying it, in fact. And it, he was saying um, that the Satan part of it is... Um, they're an, uh, another species, alien species, but we have to set. This is what he was saying. We have to, in order to, to to activate them or to be able to get in contact with them, we have to do a series of things, and one of them is is we have to. When we say we, we're on about the elites have to notify the population of what their intents are. And he said there's a particular book in, I think, the Tower of London or somewhere like that, London Museum, um, that actually spells out what their plans are. Um, so he says that's one part of the um, elite thing that they're doing to bring Satan in. Um, and there's other things they've got to do to meet this criteria in order for Satan to be able to come and do whatever he wants to do. Um, quite fascinating. Um not sh not not sure on it yet, but um, it's a it's a definitely a fascinating um, thought that David Wilcox has got there. Um, so I'm just going to move on because there's 47 messages now. So uh, Mr. Dirty Fresh has wrote: "There's remnants all throughout our solar system of I'm guessing uh, um, I'm sorry I'm so far behind now. I'm guessing that's to do with uh, aliens." Um, Tommy Wright's wrote, President Trump backs me 100% and has seen that classified top secret video of me stood next to a real ancient Stargate opening up the classified, opening up all classified top secrets. Um, all caught on camera. Okay, I mean, I'd love to, to chat to you more, Tommy, on this kind of thing. Um, I think I think you meant you, uh, you mentioned this before. So if you want to send any message on any of my videos, and then I, I read literally every message. So um, I will see your message, and then I can befriend you, and then we can have a nice little chat. I'd love to chat to you. Um, uh, Man to Wheels has wrote: If you parked a rover on Mars, it would crush and melt it. Well, according to uh whistleblowers there is some atmosphere on mars um and there's some methane etc which means there's biological creatures on mars still producing um some sort of atmosphere um so i mean you know who do you believe really because i mean like venus is supposed to be 
um, this you know gas giant thing that or gas planet that you can't really get on, but yet other people have said no, no, underneath underneath the gas cloud is an actual planet um, that you can physically stand on. So um, yeah, it's it's a tricky one to know everything about everything. Um, Mister Dirty Fresh, have you watched uh, all of the Cosmic Disclosure on Gaia? Um, Cosmic Disclosure, that's not the one with Emery Smith, is it? Um, I haven't watched all of them. Um, I have watched some of them. Um, and for those of you that are interested in this subject, um, Gaia is a TV station that you can subscribe to. Um, if you've got like a Roku box or something like that, you would need to, um, add that app to your tv you know just like you would with plex or youtube or netflix um and gaia does doesn't just deal with aliens it deals with all sorts of things energy healing for your body crystal uh, crystals all sorts of things so it's you know if you're interested in any of that kind of thing it's quite good um might be worth dipping your toe in you know for for as you know month or two and see whether you like it or not um man to wheels has wrote who are the um whistleblowers? Is that the Wombles of Wimbledon? Uh no, it's Great Uncle Bulgaria. Um so that, sorry, that's a bad joke. Uncle Bulgaria is one of the Wimbledon people. Um so the whistleblowers are I mean you can see them, um, like Corey Good, um Emery Smith, uh there's a few others out there. Then you've got the people that contact Linda Moulton Howe that avoid Obviously, their face has been shown because they're still in the military. So there's 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 whistleblowers out there, and obviously you've got you know people that um, come front and centre like um, Edward Snowden. Um, so you know you can't laugh and say there's no such thing as whistleblowers when people like Edward Snowden was proven to be right, um, and Ed, you know um, WikiLeaks as well was showing things that were proven in the end to be um, correct. So you know. Uh, just because I say that whistleblowers, um, you know, I, I always say, you know, do your own research as everyone does, do your own research. But when you add their stuff to other people's stuff and then you work it all out and you use logic and everything else. Um, but, you know, I, we're, we're with whistleblowers. I, I throw out what I've heard them say, but I'm not saying whether or not it's true. Um, I mean, the um, Gary McKinnon thing was true. Uh, you know, he definitely did hack into the, the NASA systems. They went after him big time. So he obviously found something that they didn't want him to to find out. So, you know, whistleblowers, there's a place for whistleblowers. So they're not on Wimbledon Common. Um, uh, just scrolling down. Man to wheels, are you okay? Do you need more meds? I'm guessing man to wheels showing a picture of his bike compensating for something maybe I don't know um his first white house uh, sorry Tommy's replying back to what he was talking about earlier um Mr Dirty Fresh has replied to man to wheels you clearly haven't done any research and found all these collaborating stories thank you Mr Dirty Fresh that's the problem isn't it it's just, it's kind of like yeah, I hate bringing the religion into it, but you know, the religion is is a faith, unfortunately, and those people don't research; they just take one Bible, you know, Old Testament, New Testament, whatever, um, and because someone tells them that that's right, they they totally believe it, and oh, that's really sad because they've not gone back to the original source, and that's what I always try and do. So. Um, so I'm guessing Man to Wills probably hasn't done any research, just listens to to you know my chatting now and then decides that I sound like a crackpot. But um, you know, I guess I do to some people. Uh I'm just trying to read. Uh Tommy's writing those pyramids built in eight different countries around the world had ancient anarchy had ancient anarchy time travel knowledge. Um yeah I'm I'm getting to the um Anunnaki and the pyramids um in my videos so um I'll get back up to that um Tommy's wrote or Tammy sorry 
what is the info on the redhead? So I did a live chat yesterday um, explaining it. But basically, if you watch my videos, um, I conclude that the um, the Nephilim, which were the offspring of the Anunnaki and the humans, moved to... And when I say offspring of the Anunnaki and humans, they probably had um, relationships with some of the other species here on the planet i don't know i wasn't there but um like the denizens that which i can't pronounce and neanderthals and whatever else but uh so generally the nephilim which were the giants but they're not they weren't all giants and there wasn't every single one of them wasn't a giant from what i understand from the skeletons that we found you know we found you know six to ten foot skeletons which is obviously very very tall but the anunnaki were eight to ten foot so um we can surmise that not all the giants were 400 foot tall as opposed to uh well as as said by many different stories but anyway so um the giants ended up a uh, majority of them in the descriptions had red hair two rows of teeth and six fingers um and they traveled around uh obviously uh, avoiding probably people and eating people from the story the way the stories go but um a majority of them ended up in Scotland, um, and there's many books and um, old stories, folklores, etc., of giants in Scotland. So, when you think, okay, well, if they ended up in Scotland, and they're redhead, uh, but not all of them were giants. So, you know, maybe they're, you know, the six foot to ten foot ones ended up in Scotland as well. Um, if you put that aside and you think well okay maybe that's where the so i'm not saying it's definite but the the that's the only thing i can put down to where the redheads come from and why scotland had probably a majority of them compared to other places um and that's just trying to use the evidence that we know of of the giants in scotland and yes there is some evidence of giants even tools and um weapons and things that they had back then as well as the stories and uh uh uh, anything else to do with giants? Sorry, just, just right there. Um, just reading on. So, uh, um, Tommy's wrote, uh, these famous pyramids of Giza were never built by a small, weedy, f feeble Egyptian people. Yep, spot on. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, your mon down bad i think it says do you have a website or something with all your information no i don't i have a youtube channel which basically shows all these videos that i put up um that's just called our true history on youtube it also has the live chats that i've done and it's also actually now got videos that tiktok ban before they even get put up uh, i release them and then it sort of says um about an hour later sorry your video's been marked as whatever it is and uh we're not showing it so i end up putting it on youtube so youtube is probably the best place to go to get the best information there's a book out there if you're interested called black ops aliens spirits bigfoot and our untrue untold history um that's on amazon kindle as well paperback oh, that's a fantastic book if you wanted to get it covers a lot of stuff um if you want to look at that book um resources we can download well that book there is is fantastic it's one of my my good suggestions um anything that linda moulton howe does uh you know from crop circles to mutilations um i find her work fantastic she's very credible um i i've listened to her for a long long time I mean, she's been going for, <laughs> for a long time and um you know some people i can catch out on things or where they've changed the narrative or where they've learned something new um they'll you know they'll then mention that later on and then i sort of think aha i remember them saying something before but linda's always been spot on and uh so anything that she says is is you know for, as far as i'm concerned is really real and true she i don't think she'll say anything that uh wasn't right uh tommy wright has wrote uh they are twelve thousand. this is to do with the pyramids they are twelve thousand. 500 years old before the Egyptian civilizations. Yes, that's what I concur as well. I'd love to chat to you, Tommy. You're obviously very clued up. Um, uh, tension seekers wrote, fossilized wood is stone. That's the petrification 
of the trees for example which i will be doing um, a video and if you're interested in that uh, tension seek uh, michael tellinger on his website michaeltellinger.com has just done um, a series of things on the trees that are absolutely massive i don't know if you've seen the tiktok videos where people were suggesting that these what look like you know cut down trees that are absolutely you know four five hundred foot tall um are petrified trees um now michael tellinger's done some research on that which is great because you know he he really puts his heart and soul into this research um and that's pretty much his main job now really um so when you've got someone like him that's coming out and saying the same thing then you think okay that is really interesting because how old were those trees so um i'll be trying to talk to michael and seeing if i can do a collaboration with him uh for my videos so but if in the meantime if you are interested in the fossilized wood turn into stone um watch michael tenant or go to michael um tammy's wrote uh redheads i have done uh just sort of briefly covered that uh earlier on in the video so i'm sorry i don't want to repeat myself only because of 30 eight messages still to go but um i'll put this on youtube later on today and uh you can have a listen to it. but if you're interested go back on my videos um oh, i haven't released it yet sorry it's not released yet there's a video coming up to do with redheads um uh 482 i think the video number is um it's got a picture of uh, the scottish girl from guardians of the galaxy stroke doctor who which her name I, eludes me right now she's actually really pretty I uh, can't remember her name. Um, you'll all be telling me her name now. I can't remember it uh, off the top of my head quickly. Um, uh, Tension Seeks wrote, they came from Mars, the red planet. Uh, I'm guessing you're referring to the gingers there because the, the comment above. Um, now, supposedly there's, there is indigenous people on um, Mars, but um, the only time I've heard that they're, what they would look like is Chinese people, but um, I've not heard of them being red redheaded. But um, we know the giants were, and we've we've actually people have actually found skulls of giants. Is how we know with the hair still um, attached to their skull um, and beards, red beards and stuff. So that's how we kind of know, as well as the stories from the Indians, the native Indians used to talk about the redhead giants. Um, uh, Tommy's wrote Sumerian gods of knowledge, Stargate, time travel, ancient ancestors. Yeah, uh, um, uh, Amanda's asking Tommy where the video is if, if he's got one for what he's saying. Um, Tommy writes a lot, Tommy just. Send me a message. I mean, I can't. I don't want to sort of keep reading out your stuff. Obviously, it's for other people as well. That's fine. But I'm just saying, I, it's hard to sort of because other people say things in between, so it's hard for me to sort of have a narrative of your what you're saying because I keep getting cut off with other people's questions here. Uh, what's your thoughts on Star Forts? Uh, that the values wrote Star Forts. I've not heard of Star Forts. I'll be honest. Um, uh, maybe it's a name, maybe it's something I have heard of, but it's a name that's now sort of people are using that I've not heard them use. So maybe if you could just enlighten me on what that is, um, I might know something about it. But um, it's like, you know, UAPs and things. Now they've changed the name for, to UAPs from UFOs. And obviously if you don't know the UAPs, um, then, then even though you know about UFOs, do you see what I mean? So Star Forts might be something I know about, but people's now stuck a new name to it. Um, sorry, just scrolling down. Debbie's asked about the redheads as well. Um, keep watching my videos. They're, they're about to come out. I did did mention where I think the redheads come, fit in and why they're from Scotland, a majority of them. Um, but keep watching my videos. I'm going to release one. Um, I might do it after this, which might have um might explain a bit more for you um uh okay so fb soul cooper has wrote what's your take on light beings tall whites that have enslaved the greys so 
the tall whites, from what I understand, um, are using greys as uh, they're sort of an android type. They're the ones that I believe are with the tall whites. So I don't know whether the class is enslaved. I guess they are enslaved because they're forced to do stuff. Um, now, whether they're sentient or not, uh, meaning whether they're, they're self-aware of themselves and whether they're being manipulated as a program, I don't know. But um, there's enough people out there that have said that these are, um, those ones are, you know, android-ish. Um, so I don't know whether they're enslaving them or not. Or obviously, they're creating them, but whether or not they're enslaving them, I guess they I guess they're living beings and then they're inserting this technology into them. So I guess they are, are slaving them. Um, so what's my take on um, the tall whites? Now, what I have heard is um, they live in families. Um, they have visited. There's um, security guards, army security guards have seen them and have been, you know, um, where they've been walking, I'm just trying to remember the story, where they they landed sort of in a deserty area um, just outside a military base and they walked in towards the military base and the security guard was like, oh my God, what the hell are these um, tall white beings? Uh, but apparently they are um, known to the military and, you know, deal with the military. They've got a sense of humour, unlike the little greys that don't. Um, and from all intents and purposes they're not bad they they do what they need to do um they they're not even though we get abducted by them and they do operations on us they're not bad they're doing they're doing what they think is right for whatever reason whether it's for their own hybridization program or whatever but um I've never heard anything sort of bad said about them. They're normally the ones that oversee the operations, um, you know, uh, from the abductees. However, uh, the people or the species that sometimes are overseeing them supposedly are the um, praying mantis types. So you've got sort of a chain there of the praying mantis, then the tall whites, then the little greys. However... Along with that, you've there, there's been abductees that have said they've seen these um, tall um, humanoid type people, um, which could have been Nordics or Palladians or some other race that we don't even know of, or they could have just been uh, American military people. But um, there's also been military people have been seen with the tall whites on ships where people have been abducted. So I don't think the tall whites are, you know, like the reptilians that have got a bad name. I think they're just doing whatever they're doing. And, um, you know, just going back to where the greys have called us containers before, I think, I think whatever the whites, tall whites are doing is in the name of the um, light energy beings, which is what you asked about as well. I think um so their end goal is is continuing on with whatever our energy our light energy being that connects with us is doing um so I think they're I, I don't think they're bad as such um uh, <laughs> uncommon down has wrote <laughs> maybe uh, completely besides the point, but your voice is very calming. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what to say to that now. Uh, dear. Um, uh, whole, whole, holes the gout says, if Satan exists, we have a soul. No need to live in fear. Um, uh, that's. If Satan exists, we have a soul, but then there's no need to no need to live in fear but i mean if satan exists and we have a soul that means satan could take our soul that would make me want to live in fear um I, you know i've heard stories of where the the um greys have got these um on a ship they had this i mentioned it before i think they, they got this rows and rows and rows and rows of what looks like cages but not cages that we would understand and inside those were like beings which are the light beings that sent inside us when we we're alive um and the i think it was a contactee said to one of the greys 
what are they? Um, and the, the alien turned around and said, um, none of your business. So um, I, the, it fears me that if, if we die and we have this light energy that, you know, it's with us and then we sort of become that energy after we die, like a ghost, that an alien can physically take that and lock it in a cage. That scares me because then if that's eternal, then, <laughs> then yeah, your life uh, is in their hands, really, if they can capture you as a energy source. Um, I'm not saying they was going to do anything bad to it, but it's you know putting them in a cage isn't a great idea. Uh, uh, the value is replying to Tommy. Um, R925, I love this topic. Thank you. I'm not sure which topic I've probably moved off of, whatever it was I was talking about at the time. Uh, uncommon down bad as wrote, you actually sound very nice, kind soul energy. Thank you. I, If I had a pound or even a penny for every time someone says to me, you're too nice about anything, you know, I've... I've done things for people that, you know, people cry at if they found out I've done, you know, these things and not been paid for it or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm, unfortunately, I'd be a billionaire if I was, if, if I had a penny each time someone said, you're too nice. Um, uh, okay, nine uh, R925, wait, explain Pyramid again. I just joined. Um, I'm not talking to anyone. I'm just... Uh, sorry, he's asked who 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 is he talking to? I'm talking to you guys. Um, so, what would you like to know about the pyramid? I've only got eight minutes, so um, if you could quickly type specifically what you're after, because I could talk about when it was built, how it was built, why it was built. So, if you just sort of uh, who built it, um, you know, if you just sort of give me a bit of a direction. Um, uncommon down as right. Welcome, dude. Dennis Ovan, yes. <laughs> Dennis Ovan. That's probably it. Um, yeah, uh, sorry, I'm just reading some messages here. Six fingers, laugh out loud. That's common, man. That's a stretch. That's referring to the giants that have been, the skeletons that have been found with six fingers. Um, it's just a shame that, that Smithsonian, or shall we say the Rockefellers and those people, got involved otherwise we would know a lot more than we do now um unfortunately then those skeletons just disappear um uh uh nine two for r to nine wrote uh join clubhouse app it has way more people debating these topics and more so that's someone else is talking about these things um i recommend the date uh, the values wrote, I recommend the David Rumsey historical map for research access points. Um, oh, well, the values wrote, Star Forts, old architectural areas with sound technology integrated into uh, influence the whole environment. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, I've not, not heard it called that before, but yeah. Um, unfortunately, I've only got seven minutes now, so I'd, um, I better not sort of start too much on that. But if you if you haven't already, Michael Tellinger goes into some fantastic detail about that. Um, and he's found, because he's from, from South Africa, he's actually found stones that he believes were used by the Anunnaki. Um, and he's one of the videos he's got, he's got this stone, um, certain, certain shape, and it's obviously been... Um, created that shape it's not just a stone he's found on the ground and when you tap it you just have to tap it a tiny bit ding, and it just rings for like a couple of minutes ding, 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 ding. so clearly that there if you put a, a certain frequency through it just like a speaker um could produce whatever it is that they use for the sound technology to create levitation so um do go to michael tellinger's uh, website if you haven't already done so he's, he's a fascinating guy um fb soul cooper's wrote spot on i'm not sure what that's referring to i'm a bit behind sorry about that um the value has wrote it said that the answer oh you're gonna get me on this but I, I don't know whether it's typed wrong or whether I, i'm bad at spelling but ascension guides I, i'm guessing that's what it's supposed to be ascension uh it said that the ascension guides of our time have calming voices and you can listen and relax. Uh, not only 
old stuff it's inside all of our towns okay that's interesting not really heard that side of it before but um fb soul coopers wrote i've heard that i've heard that about the soul not sure if they want it for a new alien body linda has talked about yeah so well i've i've heard the stories that um the aliens have taken the souls from one dying person put into a cloned body and then I've heard the stories of our military doing that in um, one of the underground layers in uh, Area 51. So, to me, it seems plausible. And I've even heard people, um, you know, reputable people, saying that they've seen a Bigfoot walking, holding what looked like a uh, an orb, you know, a light energy being. Um, so we're probably behind on the game on all of what's going on but um if that's the case if they can take out our soul and replace it into a clone um then all the conspiracy people that are saying you know certain people are clones uh wouldn't be so far-fetched really um you know just because we can't do it um you know doesn't mean someone else can't take take a soul out and uh move it to another body to a clone body and the cloning's um you know, we can pretty much say that they are cloning people because, you know, when they cloned Dolly the sheep and made a big thing about it, that was, what, 20 years ago? Um, you know, we know from everything else that the, we're normally 40 years behind the military. So what we know on mainstream, we're 40 years behind the military, um, apparently, according to... A hell of a lot of researchers that have worked out where we are in terms of compared to military so if if we've just found out about dolly the sheep you can imagine they were already there's no way the military is going to say well let's not you know clone a human they, they that's the first thing they'll be trying to do um so is joe biden an alien tony wilson's wrote um if he is, he's, he's the worst alien I've seen. <laughs> not probably not the world's smartest alien. I wouldn't have said he's an alien. I think he's just a, a pawn in the elite's game. I mean, you've probably seen the videos where he gets told what to, who to ask questions of on the, uh, you know, when he's being interviewed, and um, yeah, he, basically he's just a pawn. I think for the elites. It's the same as. Um, Ronald Reagan, there's some footage of Ronald Reagan um, and there's someone behind him and no one knew who this person was behind him but this person kept leaning over and whispering into Ronald Reagan's ear um, and telling Reagan what to say and what to do and whatever else. Um, so there's someone behind the scenes, obviously, you know, the president you think has got f full power. They don't. Uh, even Reagan... Um, and I mean, the people that did almost have full power, such as JFK, unfortunately, he um, met the sticky end that, that uh, they wanted him to, because there's no way they wanted someone. And Trump was obviously, you know, I'm not, I'm not an expert on uh, things, but just looking at Biden and looking at Trump and looking at the support that Trump had compared to Biden, you, to me, the, the, that was clearly there was probably half. You know, hardly anyone, in my opinion, voted for uh, Biden, but they, you know, it's the same as these COVID figures. All these hospitals send one central place these figures, and it's this central place that you have to trust that puts out these figures. And if that central place is is corrupt, then the figures come out corrupt. And it's the same as um, the voting thing, regardless of what, um, who who actually went out and voted, whatever it is that they wanted the end result to be will be whatever they wanted the end result to be. There's no way they're going to allow um, Trump to carry on if, they, if they're doing the thing that I think they're doing now with what's going on. They, Trump, yeah, he wouldn't have... Yeah, so that's my take on that. I have to be careful what I say because I get pulled off. Um... Uh, the values wrote the technology uh, look at churches big castles uh, palaces federal buildings old psychiatric buildings hospitals light towers and castles sorry for my bad typo don't worry <laughs> I type so quickly that I don't even bother rereading what I write and it ends up 
uh, really badly spelt. Um, but it's now, unfortunately, that time of day again where I have to leave everyone. I just saw someone's just joined. I'm so sorry. Um, but um, if probably Amanda sends me a message again and tells me to do another live tomorrow, I'll probably have to do it because she seems to be my boss at the moment telling me what to do. Um, but thank you very much for sending the likes and the, the little happy faces that I can see smiling away. Um, I'll, I'll upload another video as soon as I get off of here um, so you guys have got something to watch but if you've not already watched my videos because what I've done is I've looked at the um, statistics on who watches it and sort of like um, one of the videos only had 8% of the followers watching and obviously it's sad because they're following and it'd be nice for them to have gone back so if you haven't already done so either watch them in blocks of 50 on YouTube um, or go back on my videos and go to number one because it kind of makes sense. Thank you for uh, sending me that rose times 20 from FB Soul Cooper. Thank you. Um, but yeah, go back and watch the videos because you might enjoy them and um, I might put you to sleep with my boring voice. So, but thank you very much and I'll hopefully talk to you guys soon. I'll put a new video up as soon as I get off the video off here. Thanks very much. Thank you for your excellent questions. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.